chainsaws. They're a staple for loggers and horror movie serial killers. But I'll bet you didn't know that their original invention had nothing to do with clear-cutting the Amazon or murdering horny Texas teenagers. And a little more to do with the ever so unpleasant miracle of life. Humans have been giving birth for thousands of years. It's how we ended up with so goddamn many of us. But surprisingly, through the majority of our history, we really haven't been that great at the process. It's a painful, arduous, and dangerous process that often resulted in an attempt to make new life end life. For most of human existence, maternal and infant mortalities during childbirth have been a common occurrence. And as civilization has advanced, we've looked for ways to improve that process. In the 1800s, childbirth started moving out of the home in the hands of midwives and into hospitals in the hands of doctors. Which you think would improve things, but in fact made the problems worse for a little while. Turns out, before they discovered germ theory, hospitals were a lot less sanitary than homes. Who would have thunk that a building full of sick people being worked on by doctors who didn't wash their hands would have caused infections to skyrocket in pregnant mothers. However, it was finally figured out in 1847 that doctors not washing their hands in the maternity ward going from one patient to the next was getting everybody infected. But all the while, doctors were figuring out by trial and error that they should probably wash the gross stuff off their hands from the last patient before getting more gross stuff on their hands with the next patient. They were also trying to figure out more medical ways to remove the mini meat bags without killing one or both of the parties involved. Now, most people are familiar today with a really common and birthing practice called a C-section. However, the C in C-section stands for cesarean, and with a name attributed to Caesar, you might guess that C-sections are not a new practice. And while C-sections have been a medical practice for centuries, their use on women who are expected to survive childbirth is a lot more recent. In fact, while today one in three babies is delivered by C-section, the practice really didn't start becoming mainstream until the 1970s and 80s. They've used salad tongs and suction cups. At one point, a guy even filed a patent for a birthing centrifuge that the woman would sit on and spin her around really fast and like launch the infant out like it was training for an Apollo mission. However, with the probable exception of birth by tilt-a-whirl at the county fair, uh, that method has never been used. So doctors spent centuries trying to figure out better ways to get big heads through little holes. And since the pelvis is often not big enough to allow the baby to exit the building, a procedure called a symphysotomy used to be common. It's where they'd cut through the ligaments or the cartilage of the pelvic joint to make more room. However, having to perform the procedure quickly and accurately by hand on a woman who probably wasn't on the best painkillers and clearly not having the best day meant that success rates, well, were hit or miss. To try and address that, a couple doctors from the same country that thought that hitting a ball the size of a chicken egg into a gopher hole hundreds of yards away would be a fun time, came up with an idea. You see, back then, fancy people like doctors carried watches on a chain like the Monopoly Man. And these doctors looked at that chain and were like, hey, if I put sharpened teeth on this and attached it to a hand crank, I'd have to do a lot less work getting through that pelvis bone. And that's what they did, and it turns out it worked more okay than the other methods that they had at the time. Also turns out that there's more okayer methods that would soon replace it. But around the same time that doctors and skirts were finding new and exciting ways to cut through people, the internal combustion engine was also being invented and refined. And as it turns out, if you give a guy a motor and something that moves, he'll usually find a way to put those two things together. That's exactly what Samuel J. Benz did in 1905 when he patented the first motorized chainsaw for cutting down trees. Another fun fact, probably the most well-known brand of chainsaw, Steel, got started when its founder, Andreas Steel, patented the very first electric chainsaw in 1926. But the moral of the story is that when Leatherface cuts up Morgan with his McCulloch, he's actually using it for more of its intended purpose than the guys on Axemen.